Today's tutorial is all about zentangles and drawing. I'm using a colorful piece of watercolor paper to sketch out a giraffe that I'm then going to fill with zentangle patterns. Feel free to use whatever background paper you have on hand, even if it's just a page in your sketchbook. Pick an animal that you feel comfortable drawing, whether it's simple like a turtle or complicated like a horse. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss an art tutorial. For this video, I'm going to be using a watercolor background that I've created, and if you're interested in this technique, click the link above. So I'm picking out one that is interesting and has really nice colors, but won't be distracting from all the fine details I'll be using in my Zentangle. The ones that have a little bit more texture, I used a salt technique, so I'm gonna use this one that's just watercolor washes. Next, it's time to select what animal you will be using for this animal Zentangle, and I'm going to do a giraffe. What you see me doing now is Google image searching giraffe clip art black and white. If you're an expert at drawing animals, you may not need to use a reference image, but for me, I always like to have something to look at, and Googling clip art black and white simplifies the image so I can just focus on the shapes and the lines. So what I'm doing here is I'm sketching out the basic shapes of one of the giraffe images I've selected. I want it simplified, but not cartoonish. So the hardest part of this, in my opinion, will be drawing your animal. If you're interested in just doing a regular Zentangle that doesn't have to look like anything, I have a ton of those. And if you click the link above, I'll go through my Zentangle playlist. For this though, I want my Zentangle to be contained in the outline of an animal. And a giraffe is just an animal that I think has a lot of space for pattern. So what you see me doing is just sketching out, feel free to sketch along, find an animal of your choice, make it more complicated or more simple than me. This will be the hardest part because you want it to look like the animal of your choice. I thought about doing a close-up of a cat or maybe an owl or a bird, and really any, any animal works even if it doesn't have a lot of pattern already. I know a giraffe, for example, has a really nice pattern on its fur, but you can create these sections to do your patterns and it doesn't have to be an animal that already has a pattern on it. It's important to keep in mind when using a reference image that you are copying someone else's work. I did not draw this giraffe, and there are things about it that I want to be different and to change. So I'm not tracing it, I'm just trying to capture um, the basic shapes and lines, knowing that I'm using a reference image that someone else created. So anytime that you are sketching and drawing from a photograph or drawing from an artwork that isn't yours, keep in mind you wanna change it in some way and you wanna be aware that you didn't create this reference image. I'm also working in pencil and I'm not being too hard on myself for things that I've messed up on. The eyes being crooked, one of the ears being kind of off to the side. I know that this artwork is gonna change as I create and the Zentangle pattern really is gonna tie everything together. So when drawing something, don't be too hard on yourself. Know it's a learning experience and try to pick something that works at your comfort level. Now it's time to start really committing and I have my Sharpie permanent marker that I'm gonna do my large outlines with. So I'm going to use the Sharpie to commit to sections that I say, yes, this looks right, because as you know, you can't erase a Sharpie. So it looks like I'm going pretty quick. That's because I'm comfortable with what I've done so far. I use my pencil, and again, I know that the Zentangle Patterns is gonna make, give me a lot of freedom um, to cover up anything that I'm not as happy with. So this is the part where using any type of pen that you have, I do prefer Sharpie for this just because I really like the thick line, and as a public school teacher, it's something that I have on hand. You might have some really nice drawing pens. My favorite brand are the Micron, and I do have a set of those, but I'm gonna be keeping this more classroom friendly or budget friendly and just using my set of Sharpies. So anything that is big, anything that is a defining feature, I'm going to use this thick Sharpie. Now at this point, I am stressing out a little bit because I don't love how it looks, but I'm gonna say it again, it's gonna all come together eventually once I get those patterns in there. So the next step, getting my eraser out, making sure that everything is filled in, it's time to start sectioning things off to create those pattern sections. So I am adding a few little spots to the nose of the giraffe, making my lines thick, procrastinating a little bit because now that I've done this step, it's time to add those patterns and that can be a little bit intimidating. 
I'm starting with a very basic pattern with a fine point sharpie in one of my giraffe sectioned off areas. So if you're doing a giraffe, just pick an area. And if you're doing an animal that doesn't have a pattern on it, make one. Draw a little organic shape or divide it with a ruler and just fill it up with a pattern. I'm starting with dots because they make me feel comfortable. I've done it a ton before, but I want to kind of make it not a boring pattern. So I'm going to add small dots that go around it. Just like when drawing an animal, use patterns that you feel comfortable with. So don't start with the hardest pattern ever. Pick something that you've done before or that you feel like that you can do. And I always entangle with my permanent marker or my drawing pen. I don't pre-plan the patterns. I just kind of let them flow with the permanent marker or the drawing pen that I'm using. Just like I looked up images to draw my giraffe, feel free to Google patterns or zentangles and you'll have plenty of ideas to use as a jumping off point. Even if you directly copy a pattern, I'm definitely not the first person to do polka dots, so there's nothing wrong with borrowing some ideas and making them your own. Because I use this watercolor wash background and I have an animal shape, my patterns are a little bit more on the simple or more basic side just because I feel like there's already a lot going on. If you have a plain white background or your animal is really simple, you might feel the need to make your patterns more complicated or with more detail. That's part of learning how to create art is figuring out how much detail does it need and how much areas of rest does it need. That's why I really love working on top of these watercolor papers because it provides just such a pretty background to start that it just enhances the most simple of patterns and drawings because of the colorful background. Now that I've filled up most of my pre-pattern sections, I'm going to move on to the face, which is a little bit of a scarier section for me because I want it to actually look like a giraffe and a neck can be a little more simple and loose, whereas the facial features, you know, they I want them to look giraffe-y. So I'm taking my pen and I'm creating lines and this is where I really embrace the idea of just letting my patterns fill certain spaces and run into each other without really pre-planning it like I did on the neck. You can see I'm still keeping it really simple, stripes, polka dots, and I'm containing one in the ear. And then this one, I'm like, okay, well, where do I end this pattern since the ear doesn't have a line? And you can see it kind of naturally just finished, naturally just created an end point. And so I'm gonna use that in all my other sections um, to just like let the patterns flow into each other. I also really like this fine point Sharpie next to the thick line and I'm going back into the neck because I felt like there's a lot of open area and I want to kind of close that in and make it more pattern based, still seeing the watercolor background but giving a little bit more detail. I like how this space anchors the giraffe because it kind of goes off the page and into the corner. And I'm doing this wavy line pattern I've been doing since I was a kid. It makes me think of a plate full of spaghetti noodles all swirled together. So if you're not comfortable drawing patterns or you don't have one that's a go-to, practice in your sketchbook. There's nothing wrong with practicing before starting on a final piece. Line variety is important too. You can see some of my lines are thin, some are thicker, and I am filling in darker areas to create a more interesting work of art to look at. So I'm feeling really good about the neck of my giraffe. I like how it's all coming together and I'm making my sections have just more lines and I'm really enjoying kind of the free flow of how I'm drawing. So now I'm going to move into the head of the giraffe and I'm going to just keep doing my patterns and again this area does kind of stress me out a little bit more than the neck just because it needs to look like a giraffe. So I'm just drawing a diamond-like pattern, not perfectly, which is okay. A zentangle does not have to be perfect. It's a peaceful style of drawing. It's pattern-based. Um, there's definitely lots of structured patterns that you can follow, and I always shout out the zentangle method. Uh, if you just go to zentangle.com, you'll see what I mean. There's tons of step-by-step -step instructions to create structured patterns. But for me, this is a little bit more loose. I'm just kind of going with it as I draw. At this point, I'm going to speed things up so this video isn't an hour long. And I'm just speeding this along. Um, I'm repeating exactly everything I've done before using a variety of patterns that I feel comfortable with. So feel free to slow the video down or pause it. And most of these patterns I'm kind of creating as I go, trying to make them not 
exactly the same. So each one's a little bit different. There might be some that are similar, but I wouldn't put two of the exact same patterns right next to each other. I do like those little flowers under the eye. Um, because the head has a lot more detail than the neck, I did go back in and add a little bit more lines in there because my goal with this pattern-based artwork is to create a balanced work of art with areas of light and dark and interesting patterns all the way across. I feel like I'm finished. I am darkening, adding a couple more lines. Um, I like the simplicity of it, although there is a lot going on with the pattern. So I feel pretty happy with where this artwork ended up. So here it is, my finished animal Zentangle. And thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me. And remember, you do you, go at your own pace and work in a way that makes you feel comfortable with your artistic growth. If you're interested in more tutorials, check out these Zentangle drawing tutorials. Also, check out my website, thatartteacher.com, for full-length lesson plans. And if you're interested in what my students are doing in the classroom, find me on Instagram at thatartteacher underscore machado.